So that's what we look at in uh, the second interpretation of PCA. Right? So again, we have the same setup that given n li uh, linearly independent or n orthogonal vectors, uh, we can represent xi exactly as a linear combination of these vectors. What do I mean by exactly? Perfect. Okay, if you actually describe the whole thing in words. Okay, so that's exactly what I mean, right? So you are going to write xi as alpha one i into p one plus alpha two i into p two and so on. And when you do the summation on the LHS, on the RHS, you just get back the R LHS, okay. When you do the summation on the right hand side, you get back the left hand side, okay. So that means it can exactly be represented when you use all the n eigenvectors. Now if I start chopping off stuff, what will happen? It will just be an approximation, okay. Now we, this is what I meant and this is this equation holds that means this is exact and we know how to find the alpha is because pjs are conveniently orthonormal. So, we know how to find that easily. Okay. Now, what if we consider only the top k dimensions? What is going to happen? There is going to be some error in the reconstruction. I am not capturing all the information in my original data, but there is some error which I am not being able to capture. And I made a conscious decision that that error is not important. I am willing to let it go. Hence, I want to represent the data using fewer dimensions. Okay. So, this is exactly what you do in PCA when you take the top k dimensions. Is this fine? Okay. So, now we want to select PIs such that we minimize the reconstructed error. Okay. And this is again uh, erratic actually we should try to write it as xi minus x since these are vectors and the square of vectors would just be this right. So, but you get the point right we are just trying to do the element wise uh, a squared error loss we are trying to minimize that okay. We want to do this. So, now let us try to see that if you are aiming to do this what is the condition that we arrive at okay. So, no, I thought I had asked for some changes on this let us see if you guys did oh god. I had asked for some changes on this. Uh, it is okay, I think they forgot. Let me just see how to deal with this. Okay, for a minute, all of you, can you just bear with the fact that these are actually vectors and not scalars? So, this square actually does not mean anything, it actually means xi minus xi hat transpose xi minus xi hat. So, when I use square with vectors, this is what I mean. Is that okay? Everyone can work with that notation? Fine. Okay. So, now what is x i actually the real point right the correct point which can be obtained by the full reconstruction if you consider all the n dimensions. What is x i hat just an approximation where you are considering only the k dimensions. Remember that each of these quantities is a vector okay fine okay. Now, what is happening here let me just uh, try to say this okay. So, let me just do this right. So, this is your original x and you are actually writing it as a linear combination of your p's. Somewhere you will have alpha k p k and then all the way up to p n right. So, this is p k alpha n ok. Now, what is this full thing? This is x and what is this? x hat ok. You see the picture what is the equation trying to tell you? Ok. Now, what is the difference between these two then? These guys, right? If I want to take difference between x and x hat, everyone gets that? It is the remaining terms, right? That means alpha k plus 1 into p k plus 1 up to alpha n into p n. Is that clear? So, can I write it as, uh, yeah, can I write it as this? Okay. So, you get this, right? So, I am only taking these guys because the rest will get subtracted. So, one is the full n dimensions, the other is only k dimensions. So, if I take the difference between them, what remains is k plus 1 to n dimensions and that is exactly what I have written here. Okay. And now, I am coming back to the uh, proper notation where this is a vector. right? So, I am writing the square as the dot product between the same vector. Is this okay? These are the m data points, right? this sum, this is over all the m data points you need to minimize that. Right? Is that clear? Okay. So, this is fine. Okay. 
Now, uh, beyond this, it's just some rearrangement. So, I've just expanded out that summation. This is what it would look like, right? I've just expanded out these two summations. Now, just try to do this in your head and see what are the kind of terms that you get. There are two different types of terms that you will get. So, first of all, let, uh, let's understand that when you expand this, you will end up with a lot of dot products. You'll get a dot product between this and this, this and this and so on, right? So, can you split those terms into two different types? Square terms. So, one where i is equal to j and one where i is not equal to j. Is that clear? Okay, fine. So, let me just write it as that. So, I will have uh, k plus 1 to n, right? That means n minus k terms where i would be equal to j, right? So, that means p k plus 1 was getting multiplied by p k plus 1, p k plus 2 was getting multiplied by p k plus 2 and so on. And then I'll have these remaining terms where i is not equal to j, right? So these are the dot product between the other vectors. Is that fine? You see why I have split it this way? What will happen now? The second term will go to zero. Okay. And what about the first term? Alpha ij square. Okay. Now what is alpha ij actually? How did you find alpha ij? It's the dot product between. We did this, right? Finding any of these components is just taking the dot product between xi and that dimension. So, x i transpose p j. Is that fine? Okay. Is this fine? And again, this is slight abuse. So, this is actually what? No, this is okay, right? No, this is okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I am just going to write it as this. Is this fine? I just written it twice and I can change the order since it is a dot product. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is, so this is actually summation over an index i and a summation over an index j and I can change the two summations. I can interchange them. Okay. So, that is what I am going to do now. Is this fine? I push the summation all the way inside. What is this actually? This entire thing actually. M times covariance of. So, is this, is this what you are telling me that this is m x transpose x? Is this fine? How many if you do not get this? I see a lot of blank faces. How many if you do not get this? Okay, quite a few. So, this is, uh, so i is equal to 1 to m, right? So, you are going over the data points. Okay. So, this, what is the dimension of this actually? n cross 1. And this is 1 cross n. What does this product give you? n cross n. What are the entries in this matrix? So, this was say x 1 1 up to x 1 n. And this is again x 1 1 up to x 1 n. Okay. So, that is going to be x 1 1 square or rather let me just write it in the generic form. Right? So, it is going to be x 1 uh, i into x 1 j. Right? Is that fine? And how many such matrices are you adding? M of these. So, what would you get then? What would the first let us so okay so let us do this. So, the first entry of this matrix is going to be x 1 1 square. What about the first entry of the next matrix in this series? x 2 1 x 2 1 square right. Okay. So, uh, okay this is slightly tricky to demonstrate. Let me just uh, give me a minute I will just uh, collect my thoughts and do it properly. Okay. Let us take a small example. Okay. So, x 1 1 x 1 2 x 1 3. Suppose we have a three dimensional matrix uh, three dimensional data. So, I am taking a sum of m such matrices okay, uh, i equal to 1 to m. That means, uh, this is going to vary this index right. The first index is going to vary from 1 to m. Now, let us see the first matrix and let us look at the first element of that matrix. The first element of this matrix is going to be x 1 1 square. Okay. Now, let us look at the next matrix. What is the next matrix going to be? It would be x 2 1, x 2 2, x 2 3 right? and multiplied by x 2 1, x 2 2, x 2 3. What is the first element of this matrix going to be? x 2 1 square. What about the third one? x 3 1 square. Is this fine so far? Okay. Now, you are adding all these matrices. So, what is the first element of the resultant matrix going to be? x 1 1 square plus x 2 1 square plus x 3 1 square. What is this actually? This is the dot product of x 
one with itself, right? And what does that give you? The variance if the data is zero mean, right? Okay. Now, can you make a similar argument of the ith entry? It's going to give you the covariance between the ith and the jth entry. Is that clear? Right? You could do a similar analysis. You can actually work it out after going back. How many of you are comfortable with this? There's still many who are not. Okay. So let's look at an IGF entry, right? So can someone help me with, say that one comma two entry, okay? Of the first matrix, what is it going to be? X one one into X one two, right? For the second matrix, X no, there's some ah yeah right correct. And for the third matrix, three two, okay? Now what is this? Oh, sorry, what is the summation of these? When you take the full sum, you'll get these three as a, what does this, this summation tell you? Covariance between the first column and the second column. Is that clear now? Is it okay with everyone now? Okay, fine. So what you have here is actually the covariance matrix. Uh, you seem to be lost still. Is it okay with you? Sure. Okay. Uh, so what we have here is something of this form, okay. So now what we want to do is we want to minimize this quantity subject to the following condition. Is that okay? What's the solution for this? If I didn't have the summation, okay, suppose I just wanted one dimension. So I want to minimize say P, sig, uh, P transpose sigma P such that P transpose P is equal to 1. What is the solution for this? Smallest eigen value of sigma, right? And you can show by induction that if you want k such things, right? Here I am looking for n minus k such things, right? Then these would be the n minus k smallest eigen values of sigma. But now I am talking about the smallest eigen values. But in the first solution, I said we need to pick the largest eigenvalues. So, what's the difference? These are the ones we are throwing away. These are the ones along which the error is going to be minimum. If we throw these away, the error is going to be minimum. So, we'll throw away the last n minus k dimensions, which means we'll keep the first k dimensions. Is that clear? So, you arrived at the same solution. Is that okay? Right? So, that means in PCA, you're actually trying to pick the dimensions in a way such that your reconstruction error is minimized. And this was exactly what our reconstruction error was. So don't worry about this math bit. Just see that we started with this quantity. This is what we wanted to minimize, okay? And we did some trickery and we came to this formula that minimizing that error is equivalent to minimizing this quantity. And for this, we know the solution that the solution is the smallest eigenvalue. And we want n minus k such things. That means they would be the n minus k smallest eigenvectors. Is that clear? That means we are going to keep only the k largest eigenvectors. Okay? That means you are going to project your data onto k largest eigenvectors. Now, so the key idea here is this, right? Minimize the error in reconstructing xi after projecting the data onto the new basis. So let's take an example and we'll work with our toy example again. So this was the data that we had. And suppose I give you a new basis, which is 1 comma 1 and minus 1 comma 1. Okay, this is a new basis. This is an orthonormal basis orthogonal basis, okay? You can see that u1 transpose u2 is equal to 0, okay? Now, and we'll convert it to an orthonormal basis. So, I've just divided by the magnitude. Is it okay? Fine. Now, consider the point 3.3 comma 3. This was our original point according to which coordinate axis? x comma x. That means this was 3.3 and this was 3, okay? Now, I can find the alpha i's, right? Because it's an orthonormal basis, so I can directly find the alpha i's. Now, the perfect reconstruction would be this. So, actually, if I do this, I get back the original point. Now, what would happen if I throw away the second dimension? Because the second dimension ha corresponds to a smaller eigenvalue, okay? I'll get this. So, you see that the point is still close to the original point. I have not actually lost much, right? What has happened is I have actually projected the boy line point on this line, right? The line x equal to y. 
that's why I get x equal to y. And in doing that, I'm not losing much information from the original data. Is this clear? Right, so you understand what happens when you reconstruct the data. Okay, fine. Okay, there's no end to this. Um, okay, so just a quick recap, the eigenvectors of a matrix with distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent. And we use this fact conveniently, at least in the case of square matrix, where they also happen to be orthogonal. So we know that they can form a very convenient basis. And PCA exploits this to find the top k eigenvectors which to be retained. And while doing this, we have seen that two things are at least ensured. One, the covariance between the dimensions is zero because that's exactly how we formulated it and found the solution. We saw that it turns out that we need to diagonalize a certain matrix and the solution is the eigenvectors. We also saw a different interpretation where we saw that it's the same as throwing away the dimensions along which the error would be minimum, right? And both these interpretations led to the same solution, which was project the data onto the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of the original data, okay? Uh, and this n minus k dimensions can contribute very little to the reconstruction. Now, what is the one thing which I have not proved yet? What was our wish list? Variance and covariance, right? High variance, low covariance. I have proved low covariance. I have also proved something with respect to reconstruction error because that is something I require for autoencoders. So just remember this bit about reconstruction error, okay? 